Today's lesson is on carbohydrates. Now you've probably heard of carbohydrates in your diet. Um, they are synthesized by plants using sunlight to con um, convert CO2 and water into glucose, C6H12O6 plus oxygen. And so we have six um, carbons to balance this. We have 12 oxygens, or, well, six times two is 12. Um, and then we have to put a six here for 12 hydrogens. So we have 12 and 18 oxygen, six, and six here is 18. Okay, so that is the photosynthesis equation um, to make carbohydrates. And then um, we're going to talk about polymers. So we're looking at biological polymers now. So every day we're going to be talking about different biological polymers. Glucose is a monomer. Okay, um, monomers are added together. You have one monomer and another monomer, and you keep adding, and that makes a polymer. So there's more than one monomer. Mono is one, poly means more than one. Okay, so carbohydrates, the polymers are called starch, and that's what we have, like in potatoes. That's how we store our monomers. We store our monomer or glucose uh, C6H12O6 as starch and then there's also cellulose polymer and we're going to see that that's also glucose and that's how plants store glucose in their cell walls. We can't break down cellulose and we're going to learn the structures. It's a, it's a beta 1,4 linkage and we cannot break down the hydrolyze. When I say break down, it's hydrolyze. We cannot add water um, to break that bond in order to release the monomer sugar. Starches um, are an alpha 1,4 and an alpha 1,6. This is called a glycosidic linkage. And you're going to have to be able to uh, label the glycosidic linkages. But we can hydrolyze, we can add water and break down a polymer into its monomers. And this is how energy works. So what are your learning objectives for this chapter? Um, I want you to understand the different monomers and their structures of carbohydrates. I want you to be able to do uh, Fisher and Hayworth projections. So I want you to be able to name these structures and be able to convert fissures into Hayworth projections. And then I want you to um, be able to label a glycosidic linkage. So I want you to be able to locate that and name that. And um, then I want you to be able to classify these um, disaccharides. Basically, or name them, uh, classify disaccharides and polymers by looking at the sugar structure and the glycosidic linkage. So those are our four goals. Okay, so um, classification of carbohydrates, we have... Um, we have monosaccharides. So first we're going to talk about monosaccharides and we'll talk about disaccharides. So monosaccharides, um, the Fisher projection looks like this. You have an aldehyde at the top, your most high, highly oxidized um, position. So that's carbon number one. And then you can have the different ones here. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six is always a CH2OH. 
okay? And you should be able to see that this is six carbons. So six carbons is a hexose. And since this is an aldehyde, it's an aldohexose. Okay, we also have sugars that look like this. Where this is carbon number one, and then we have a ketone at carbon number two. And then you'll have your asymmetric carbon. That's three, four, five, and then six. Okay, so there's six carbons there. So that's once again a hexose. And you see that you have a ketone here. So this is a keto hexose, which is different than an aldohexose. So these are your monomers. Now, um, in carbohydrates, every carbon has an OH, H, right? That's a hydrate. So every carbon has OHH, see, water. But when you hydrate yourself, you have water. So every carbon has, is hydrated. And that's where the word carbohydrate comes from. Now, each one of these carbons, and you know this in a Fischer projection, is an asymmetric carbon. So this carbon here, this aldohexose, has how many asymmetric centers? Four. Okay, now the configuration of the asymmetric carbon is this one here. It's always the last carbon, um, the last asymmetric carbon. And if it's on the left, then it would, so if the OH was here, OH, and this was an H here, this would be an L. Okay, that's an L, and it would. Uh, rotate plane polarized light um, into that direction. Um, if it's on the right here, it's a D, okay? Um, because it's kind of interesting that that last carbon here, right before the CH2OH, that last asymmetric carbon, will classify these sugars whether they're D or L. So this would be a D aldohexose, and this would be an L ketohexose. Now, another thing, your carbohydrates in nature, they're all Ds, okay? So if you have an L, um, aldohexose, which you can synthesize that, that's sometimes how you get um, sugars that b bacteria in your mouth cannot hydrolyze. And that gives you the same sweetness, like, but it doesn't cause cavities. So that's how you get those cavity-free sugar or sugarless gums, you know. So it can be just simple as having an L sugar instead of a D sugar because in nature enzymes will recognize the D. And you're going to learn on Thursday, Wednesday, I guess Wednesday, yeah Wednesday we're going to talk about amino acids and all your amino acids um, naturally occurring are L's. Excuse me. Okay, so um, real quick, what is this sugar here? Okay, so you get to name that, classify that. Is it a ketose? How many carbons? Four. Tetros. Okay. Did you say keto? Keto textrose? And is this D or L? Yes, so that's an L keto textrose. And you do have slides showing that right here. Okay. Um, we're not going to talk about the chemistry, so we're going to streamline these and we're just going to talk about structures every day. So I'm going through your slides as I'm looking here. So if you want to pull up your slides from Canvas, you can too. Um, right now your slides are just talking about the D and the L series of the sugars, and these are mono, uh, monomers. 
Um, there's three O's and ribolose and xylose. And a lot of these depend on um, whether the OHs are on the right side or the left side of the ring. Um, you have a big slide that just talks about the aldose family. You don't need to know erythro and 3O, and you don't need to do those reactions. Um, you do need to be aware of synthetic molecules. So when I look at the synthetic molecules, we've talked about this in organic one, and you're going to see it again in your final exam. Um, so this, when these, the top and the bottom are the same in the Fisher projections, and these are your asymmetric centers, you have a plane of symmetry. Okay, so you know that this is an achiral molecule. We also know that that's called meso. And so that would mean um, it would not rotate plane polarized light. Okay. So another molecule that's um, meso in your slides would be tartaric acid. And how to spot that is if you see on the Fisher projections, the top and the bottom are the same, and then you see that you have a plane of symmetry there, and that would be a meso. Now that would not be the same here. Okay, so even though you have the top and the bottom the same, you do not have a plane of symmetry, because if you like fold this, there's no plane. So this would be a um, chiral compound here, and this one here, the meso, would be achiral. So remember that about um, the symmetry of the molecules of the monomers. Okay, so we've talked about this in one of our classes in our lab. We talked about epimers. So an epimer is an enantiomer of each other. And so if we look at, um, let's look at glucose and galactose. Okay, so glucose and galactose. Galactose. And we, these combined make lactose, right? Remember we did this and it was a disaccharide? Okay, so now we're looking at this structure of glucose. Glucose here, this is glucose. And then this is galactose. Okay, so when you look at this, let's um, classify this. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six carbons makes it a hexose. And you have an aldehyde, right? So an aldohexose. And then you have your, car your asymmetric carbon at the C5. And it's the OH is on the right, so that's a D. So this is a D aldohexose. Now, we look at this, we have two's the same, one's the same, two's the same, um, three's the same, four is different. This OH is here, um, whereas the four, the OH is on the other side, okay? They only have one stereo center that differs. Everything else is the same. This means they're in antimers. And these are called epimers. Epimers. Okay. And that's hysterochemistry. All right. One of your goals was to um, be able to convert the Fisher projection into your Hayworth. 
and I want you to be able to do that. So here we go. Um, we're going to take Um, I think this is glucose. Yeah, this is glucose. So we're going to convert glucose. And you will have to do this in your open response. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So the way you do this, um, this acyclic structure would probably be about 0.05% of the time. This is not how you're going to find glucose. Glucose in the blood, you know how we test our blue blood glucose levels, it's in the Hayworth projection. So in the Hayworth projection is, would be this one here. Um, okay. So this is, and I know glucose has every OH is equatorial. Okay, so this would be um, the glucose here, and then you would also have it in this format. Okay, now what's the difference between these two? This here. Okay, so this is with the, this is your acetal. Can you see that this carbon here has the oxygen and the oxygen? So this carbon is bonded to two oxygens. Actually, that's a hemiacetal. And you know that in that functional group, hemiacetal. Now, if the OH is down, that's alpha. If the OH is above the ring, that's beta. Okay? And so um, how you draw the Hayworth projection is always this OH, the C5, the one that's, and hopefully at this point you're starting to notice it's the last asymmetric carbon. So this one is a, a D, right? And is this one that attacks the carbonyl. So if you want to, you can actually go ahead and make that a carbonyl on carbon number one. And it's this OH here that's going to come around and do a ring and attack that carbon. So then you always just draw your carbon and you have one, 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 two, three, four, five, six. So it's a six membered ring. Okay, so try to draw the oxygen at the 12 o'clock. And then the one o'clock to the right is going to be, this is going to be your most important, okay? That's going to be where you're, you're looking. See my eyeball? That's where you're going to look, okay? And that's always going to be to the right of the oxygen in the ring. So that's uh, carbon number one, carbon number two, carbon number three, carbon number four, carbon number five, and then six. So this one here is this carbon. Okay, the ring here, let's go ahead and make this green. This is the ring carbon, carbon, the oxygen coming up at carbon number five, okay? And then this oxygen could go down from the carbonyl or it could do a ring closure And then for these, we can just put OH down, OH up, OH down. Carbon number five here is in the ring. And then carbon number six is here. So we got OH, OH up, OH down, 
carbon number four is the oxygen ring and then so this carbon here could also go up okay and this is the beta and this is the alpha and so if you look at your slides you also see the chair conformation um, let's I'll let you um, try the cyclic hemiacetal for the fructose and you can follow your slides once again it's the C5OH that will attack the carbonyl um, and then see if you can draw that um, anomers okay so then one of the slides talks about the anomers of glucose your anomers are your alpha versus your beta and so we've showed you that when the ring closes the alpha is on bottom or if the ring closes and the beta could be above the ring and you get um, so the fact that this actually does this about I would say 1% of the time it's in the Hayworth projection and 99% of the time it's in the Hayworth projection this is called muterotation and this is important because if chemistry is happening it's going to be in this 1% um, reduction of simple sugars reducing sugars are important this means um, aldose and ketose can, monomers can be reduced so if you react this with sodium borohydride if you have an aldose or a ketose it can reduce and those are called reducing sugars now why is that important well the reason why that's important is before there was no way to detect diabetes okay and then they were able to detect reducing sugars in the urine so the reaction is to detect whether um, and uh, so glucose is a reducing sugar it's an aldose right it's an aldo hexose and so the aldehyde within with sodium borohydride will reduce to a thing called um, an aldetol which is that means the aldehyde will reduce to the um, alcohol and that was way to detect whether um, people were diabetic um, so monomers can get reduced um, non-reducing sugars um, so disaccharides and polysaccharides are um, acetals and these are non-reducing okay okay so we've talked about we need the last thing we need to talk about is um, being able to name the glycosidic bond so we want to talk about the glycosidic bond and so um, let's look so let's look at a disaccharide so a disaccharide a disaccharide is two monomers so you can have a 1 4 link you can have a 1 6 link you can have a 1 1 link okay so if you take a sugar such as this and you have it linked here let's see And then you have your linkage. Let's draw another one here. So my goal here is just to teach you what to look for when you're when you're naming these sugars. Okay.
Now, what's going to happen here Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to see the anomeric, so you want to find the anomeric carbon that is linked, that links both of the monomers, okay, to make a disaccharide. I always put two, I need one S and two seeds. Okay, so here you look at this and you see, okay, there's my acetal. This is an acetal when it's, it's not a hemiacetal anymore because it's no longer a monomer. And it's attached to the other carbon. The way you want to number these, you find your oxygen and then you go clockwise. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then when you go to the next sugar, then you go one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, five prime, six prime, okay? And so the linkage then would be right here, okay? This is, this is called the glycosidic bond. This is the linkage, and you, you name it. And here you see, it's, it's that alpha or beta. It's going up, isn't it? Okay, so it's up, so it's a beta, and it's on carbon number one. So it's a beta one, and it's connected to the four prime, four prime linkage. Okay, so it's a beta one four. Sometimes you can see it beta comma one four. Okay, or a dash. I've seen them both ways. Now you'll see that the beta one four glycosidic linkage we cannot break up. Okay, this is in cellulose. We can't hydrolyze that. It takes a special enzyme um, to hydrolyze that, and there. Um, I think you have bacteria in cow guts, right? In cow stomachs, so you have four stomachs, and there's a certain kind of bacteria that actually has the enzyme that can hydrolyze that um, beta 1 4 linkage. A maltose. What is maltose? Let's look at that one, that linkage. Okay, so maltose is um, glucose plus galactose and All right, so what is this linkage? Well, you find your, your oxygen, and then you number them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you say, okay, is that um, acetal, the glycosidic bond, is it alpha or beta? Okay, it's down. So it's alpha. So that's an alpha one. And then it's linked here. We, we find our oxygen in the ring. And then we count one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, five prime, six prime. And we see that's a one, four prime. Okay, and this is in maltose. Maltose is sugar that we can hydrolyze. We can hydrolyze the one, four linkage. We can hydrolyze this linkage, okay? So this is not a problem for us. Now, what does this squiggly line mean? That means you get equal amounts of alpha and beta monomer or anomer when that ring closes. You'll see lactose. Um, if you look at that slide, that's a beta 1, 4. And um, people that are lactose intolerant, can't hydrolyze that. Um, Gentibios is a 1,6. So take a look at that. Sucrose. Sucrose is interesting in the fact that you have a keto sugar. Okay. Look at the monomer of fructose. 
fructose is a ketone. See if you can number this. Okay, so um, I want you for, okay, so we're going to do Pogel exercises and for this week and actually next week. Okay, so I am just want one, one assignment and I'm going to give you um, a question or two each time and we're going to do carbohydrates, we're going to do nucleic acids, we're going to do amino acids, we're going to do lipids, and then we're going to do polymers. Okay, so these are your lessons and then you have a question. So what I want you to do is I want you to draw sucrose and I want you to label, um, number, and label the carbons. And then I want you to um, label the glycosidic bond linkage. Okay, and then, so I want you to do that, and then I want you to determine whether sucrose is a reducing sugar. So is a reducing sugar yes or no? You don't just write yes or no. You know, say whether it's a reducing. Yes, it is reducing, or no, it's not. Um, you just the polymers are cellulose. You can see that you get a beta 1,4 polymer of glucose. Um, it's the most abundant organic material. And we have starches. Um, starches are alpha 1,4, and um, we also get starch that gets branched, and that's an alpha 1,6. Excuse me, um, chitin. Chitin is the um, polymer that forms the exoskeletons of insects, and you see that that's an amide, forms an amide on carbon number two. And um, so hopefully you're looking at this and working through the slides. I'll see you tomorrow.